Okay, I want to talk a little bit about the periodic table and the atomic mass values here. So if we look at one square, it's not the best square in the world. <laughs> if we look at one square on the periodic table, you know, we have our element symbol there. This is carbon. We have the atomic number at the top that tells me how many protons are in the nucleus of that carbon. And we have the atomic mass here at the bottom. Now this is slightly different than the mass number and we've had another video on that. So this is atomic mass, which is the mass of one atom of this thing in atomic mass units. But this atomic mass is actually a weighted average of all of the isotopes of this particular element. So the prefix iso again means the same like an isosceles triangle. So isotope means it's the same element, but it has a different mass to it. And we know that most of the mass of an atom comes from its nucleus. And so we really consider that the mass of an atom is the mass of the protons and the neutrons. And so really one atomic mass unit is one proton or one neutron. So uh, the atomic mass is a weighted average, but the mass number is uh, a kind of a count of the total number of nucleons. Because one proton and one neutron is equal to one atomic mass unit. So when we have a nuclide symbol here, that's what we have for these guys. You can write it like this or you can write it like this. They both mean the same thing. Then we have our mass number up here on the top. And we have our atomic number here at the bottom. That's the way that you'll see these symbols. Um, for reasons that I will absolutely never understand, there probably are real reasons, but I just don't know what they are. Atomic number is abbreviated Z, and mass number is abbreviated A. You would think that A would be atomic number, but you would be incorrect. So mass number is the number of nucleons, meaning that I have 12 total uh, protons and neutrons, and that is the mass of that particular isotope in atomic mass units. So the mass number does represent mass, it does reflect how many particles are in the nucleus, the nucleons. Uh, so if I have different isotopes of the same element, right, so there's three different stable isotopes of carbon, I have carbon-12, carbon-13, carbon-14, which we've probably heard of carbon-14 and carbon dating, then if I have each of these stable isotopes, each has this particular mass, so carbon-12 is 12 AMU, carbon-13 is 13 AMU, carbon-14 is 14 AMU, the thing that doesn't change is the number of protons, right? That's distinct to carbon. They all have six protons and therefore it's carbon, or it's carbon, therefore it has six protons. It's a unique identifying feature of the element. Then the difference comes in the number of neutrons, which changes the mass. Now this atomic mass, mass that's reported on the periodic table is a weighted average of all of these isotopes. And what a weighted average does is it factors in, and I have the definition down here, um, the frequency of how often that occurs. So of course here on the uh, planet Earth, we are looking at the frequency of these isotopes with the way that we understand them and know them in the universe. The periodic table could be slightly different in different parts of the universe, uh, depending on these relative abundances or frequencies of each of these isotopes. So let's think about a weighted average. You've probably played around with weighted averages before if you've ever calculated your grade in a class, because if I have tests that are all worth 15% and then I have you know, homework assignments that are worth 20% and I have quizzes that are worth 10 and labs that are worth 15 or whatever, then all of these things are going to add up and the uh, value that you get in each of these categories is going to give you an overall grade. So let's say for the sake of argument that we have three masses of nails. Let's go to the hardware store. So I have three different masses of nails. I have one that's seven grams. I have one that's 8 grams, and I have one that's 9 grams. So I have three types of nails. They all look the same. They're all made of the same type of stuff, but I just have slightly different amounts of the things in there, so they all have slightly different masses from each other. Now, if I was to take a straight average of this,
then I would take the sum of all of these and I would divide by three, right? That's how we take a normal average. We've been averaging since forever. And we divide that by three. And we would say that the average of all of this is gonna be eight grams, right in the middle. But if I said, well, when I went to the hardware store and I took out a thousand of these nails and I looked at the frequency of each of them and I counted up how many times I saw seven grams versus eight grams versus nine grams, because I'm a scientist and that's what I do in hardware stores. And I said that, um, let's say 95% of the time I had these nine grams and eight grams I had um, 3% of the time give myself two sig figs there, 3.0. And then 2% uh, of the time, I have seven. So 2% of the time I found that my mass of my nails was seven grams, 3%, it was eight grams, 95% of the time I found nine grams. Then if I was to say, well, when I took an average of all the nails, it was eight grams, that doesn't actually reflect the numbers that I see here. That doesn't reflect the frequency amount that I observed, right? Because 95% of the time they were nine grams. So that should be factored in when I'm thinking about an average. And this average doesn't reflect that frequency. So what you'd need to do instead is to treat these percentages as a multiplier and add those up. So now my mass is gonna be, so my weighted average is going to be the mass times the frequency. So let's take our seven grams times, and we can think about this percentage. You guys know that when you multiply by a percent, you just move the decimal place over and you can multiply by the 0.02 in this case, if you would like to. I also like to think about it as a part over a whole. So this would be the number of times it occurs out of a hundred. We're going to add to it the mass of the second nail times its frequency. So the amount of times it occurs over 100, and again, this is the same thing as multiplying by your 0.03. And then I'm gonna go down onto another line here. And then here's my nine grams times. my frequency. And when I put all those together, then I end up with a weighted average of 8.93, which works for the number of sig figs that I have for my mass, but my percentages here, which would also be measured quantities, would give me uh, two, I'd be limited by these guys. So I'd round this to two significant figures. This is my rounding. So it would give me 8.9 grams as an average. So if we compare these two, right, then this one is a truer value. It's closer to what is actually being reflected here physically, because if 95% of the time I'm finding nails that are nine grams, then I would expect a weighted average to be closer to that nine grams. Now, if we go back to the same concept with our carbon, and I say there's three stable isotopes of carbon, the 12, 13, and 14, and my weighted average is 12.01, then you'd say, well, I bet that the most frequent, uh, frequently occurring isotope is carbon 12, right? Because the most abundant here is gonna be the one that is best reflected in that atomic mass. So let's look at another example. Let's talk about boron. Boron has two stable isotopes. There's actually a number of different unstable isotopes. Um, we unfortunately don't get into nuclear as much as I would like to. In some of the classes that I teach, I'll get into some nuclear in some of my other videos if you're interested. But these are two stable isotopes of boron. And if we go to the periodic table, based on its atomic mass, boron is here, it's number five, right? So here's my atomic number, that's the number of protons. This is my mass number, that's the total number of nucleons, or the mass in atomic mass units. And if I look, then it's 10.81 is what I have on the periodic table. So based on that information, which of these isotopes do you think is the more abundant? Well, and you'd say it's probably boron 11, right? And it's boron 11 
because the weighted average leans more towards that side of the two. It's closer to 11 than it is to 10, which means that there must be more of the boron 11 that's around. And we can actually go and check, do a little topsy-turvy note-taking here, and when I went to the internet to see what the frequencies were of these, I found that 19.9% of the time we get boron 10 and 80.1% of the time we get boron 11. So I said, well, let's just check the math. What should the reported atomic mass be if we run these numbers? Well, let's check. We can do that. We're scientists. So if my uh, 10 AMU here from my boron 10 is multiplied by my frequency, so this would be 19.9 out of 100 times. And I add that to my 11 atomic mass units, or U also, the universal unit, times my 80.1 over 100, right? Which again, I'm just sort of expressing here as a decimal as opposed to a fraction so that we get to see both. Then when I add these two together, I end up with 10.801. And I'm going to be limited on sig figs by my percentages. I'm going to treat the atomic mass units here as counts because it's a total number of nucleons. So it's the total number of particles. So I could count up, not that I could count them up, but one could count up individual particles. So we're going to call that an exact number for those two. So we're limited by the three significant figures in our percentage. When I look to three sig figs then, I end up with 10.8 which should be the reported value. And again, we just looked it up on the periodic table, but to remind ourselves then, the reported value when you have more significant figures, a greater number of significant figures in the percentage or a greater precision of your measurements, that gives you that 10.81 that's reported on the periodic table. So that's a little bit about weighted averages, a little bit about atomic mass, and if you have any questions on this, don't hesitate to reach out.